For more, I want to bring in Jeremy Bash, former chief of staff at the CIA and the Pentagon. Jeremy, I want to start with your reaction to the speech. What did you think of it? Well, first, I think it was uh, a bit of political theater, as all speeches before joint sessions are, whether you're the president giving a State of the Union or you are a foreign leader coming to thank Congress for bestowing aid and support on an ally. And there was broad bipartisan, bicameral support for Israel during this 200 and, uh, and, and 40 day war. So uh, you've got that spectacle. But I think really importantly, as Andrea pointed out in her piece, there are numerous camps of Netanyahu critics. I mean, there's obviously some people who are supporters of Israel but don't like Israel's policies in this war. You've got, however, another group, a very loud and vocal group of people who don't like Israel at all. And in fact, were, were spray painting graffiti saying Hamas is coming, uh, supporting Hamas, drawing swastikas, saying, you know, uh, Zionism, Zionism is down with Zionism. And so that's really kind of, I think, articulating uh, anti-Israel, really anti-Semitic sentiments that have no place in the discourse, but they're outside the door of the chamber. This is Netanyahu's first trip abroad since October 7th. Why do you think he did it? Well, first and foremost, he did it because he wanted to say thank you uh, to the United States. The United States has been a critical ally for Israel, and Israel has been a critical ally for the United States. And I think one of the things that he's trying to build with the Biden administration is a regional security architecture, not just to deal with Hamas, but to deal with Hezbollah, to deal with Iran, to deal with the myriad threats that threaten not only Israel, but also the United States. Uh, but I think he also came to have very specific talks with the Biden administration about the next steps in this ceasefire and the return of hostages deal that's really on the table now. We shouldn't forget that there are eight Americans still being held hostage in Gaza, five living hostages and three who were murdered. And I just want to you know, reference who they are. There's Hirsch, there's Keith, there's Sagi, there's Omer, and there's Idan. And then there are the murdered hostages, Itai, Gadi, and Judith. And we can't forget them. And I think the, the, the BB visit here is really designed to work with the Biden administration to figure out how to pressure Hamas to close the deal, how to get Qatar and Egypt to pressure Hamas to return those hostages so that there can be a ceasefire to pave the way for this broader regional effort to counter Iran and, and create a broader uh, U.S.-led alliance. Vice President Harris faced all sorts of criticism today for not attending the speech. But that criticism is political theater because she is meeting with him tomorrow. So is President Biden. And then Netanyahu is heading down to Florida and meeting with Trump. How much is this U.S. election hanging over his decision making? Well, I think if Bibi Netanyahu thinks he can wait out the Biden administration uh, and wait for a Trump administration, that's a, a terribly bad calculus, just as like a piece of political analysis. Because we all know this election is going to be darn close, and there's no way any foreign leader could try to figure out or predict what's going to happen in an American election. But I think also importantly, Vice President Harris has been side, side by side with President Biden in standing with Israel and supporting Israel, supporting assistance to Israel, supporting efforts to confront and counter Iran, uh, supporting efforts to get American hostages out. She herself has met with the families of these eight American hostages. And so you know, she's really there to also uh, connect with an important American ally and showcase her credentials, her very strong credentials as a potential commander in chief. This war has clearly divided Congress. How does Washington move forward on the issue? Well, again, I think there's strong support in Congress for Israel. I think that's unquestioned and that's warranted. Israel is a democracy. It's our ally. There are going to be differences about how the war is conducted. There are going to be differences about the timing of the ceasefire deal. I think what's new and interesting here, Stephanie, is that you not only have these uh, protests outside the chamber, which, again, as I said at the outset, really border on supporting terrorism, supporting Hamas, burning the American flag, you know, nothing that we should, I think, countenance as 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 proper discourse uh, given the war. But you've also got the, the hostage families who are here. And you saw one of them in, in Andrew's piece who are very critical of the Netanyahu government. They want him to conclude this ceasefire deal with Hamas. They want their loved ones home. And as a parent, as, as someone who understands their pain and suffering, I really sympathize with them. And I, I, too, want a ceasefire deal. I think Congress isn't so much divided on whether to support Israel. There is some division about the tactics of the next phases in the war. 
But once the ceasefire deal does happen, we're going to have to unite, come together with our allies and partners in the region, and really de deal with the broader threats, the threat from Iran, the threat from Hezbollah, the threat from Hamas, because they're not just attacking Israel. And Netanyahu made this point, I think, very effectively today. They're not just attacking Israel. They're attacking democracies. They're attacking the United States of America.